Hello again, my name is Mark Williams. I'm the Chief Instructor and Student Coordinator of T3, otherwise known as Trigger Time Training. We're standing right now in our beautiful range facility and training center at Trigger Time Gun Club in Longmont, Colorado. You can find us at www.t3main.com or at our Gun Club website, www.triggertimegunclub.com. Today we're going to be doing a really good video that I think a lot of subscribers, students, and Facebook users are really excited to see because we've been asked multiple times to do this. This video is going to go into detail a little bit about the techniques and gear that we use as T3 instructors, students, military law enforcement operators, as well as professional shooters. I hope you enjoy this video as much as I'm going to be enjoying putting this together and making it for you guys. Uh, sit back, relax. If you have any questions, please put them in the YouTube comments below or you can contact me, Mark, at TriggerTimeGunClub.com. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to discuss is the gear we actually use in the form of tactical nylon, what we wear on our body known as a kit, um, and some of the other different types of uh, items that we may wear or use when we deploy on a law enforcement deployment on a SWAT team or overseas to Afghanistan or Iraq. Um, you can see right here, this is my favorite brand. I'm not a sponsored person speaking about high speed gear. Um, the only uh, real type of relationship I have with them is about six years of using their products through the military in Afghanistan and multiple different countries throughout the world and now teaching professionally to others who will use this gear. High Speed Gear has been around for quite a few years now. They're an American owned company. They make some of the best tactical nylon um, and all of our instructors on the T3 team as well as what we sell in the shops exclusively um, high speed gear when it comes to what we're going to implement for our training um, and different types of shooting platforms. So we're going to be doing all of our stuff up here with pictures of high speed gear. Although if you have other gears, uh, gear systems, you can certainly use that stuff. The theories are still the same, it's just that in my opinion, uh, some of the gear that they are producing, like the uh, tacos we just saw run across the stream, are far superior to anything else. And we'll kind of discuss those in a few minutes here. All right, so we're going to get started, guys. Uh, what we're looking at here is a photo on High Speed Gear's Facebook page. I think it was made by Lions Gear. Uh, you can't see it on the screen, but there's a little photo stamp of them. So um, I don't take credit for any of this. I'll, I'll try to give it as much as possible. But all this can be uh, found on High Speed Gear's Facebook or website page. Uh, this high speed guy right now, I don't want to pay attention to him at all. Um, I don't know what he's really doing. It looks like he's trying to clear some type of context box in a close quarters combat situation. It's probably just a photo op. Um, I want to pay attention to the gear he has on his body. The reasons he's wearing it, the platform systems you can create, and kind of what the meat and potatoes of all this are. So uh, when we talk about it later in this video, you'll know what we're talking about. This gentleman right here is really set up for success with... Uh, all of the equipment he's going to need from head to toe for probably a one or two day operation. We'll kind of talk about it and then we'll go more into detail later in the video. Starting up at the top of his head, we'll work our way down and discuss what these things are. Um, obviously, um, if we look up, uh, we won't really pay attention to his uh, ear protection or his gun or any of that stuff. But first, we want to look at his front uh, carrier. There's two different types of carriers you can really find in the market these days and he's wearing one of these. The one he is wearing is what's known as a chest rig. A chest rig is basically going to be your primary source of ammunition placement or carriage location. Um, it can hold primary, which is your carbine ammunition, or secondary, which is your pistol ammunition. It can also hold things like grenades, flashbangs, flashlights, knives, things that are critically important to the events that are taking place right now. This is the immediate tools that you're going to need to defend yourself uh, or do offensive or defensive operations. They're also the things if you're a civilian shooter in a three-gun competition or some type of tactical, tactical course, you're going to need for your daily operations. The second type of uh, front uh, carrier you could use is what's known as a plate carrier. A plate carrier sounds just like what I'm referring to. It usually houses some type of sappy plate, uh, which is a military law enforcement grade uh, ceramic plate that helps deflect and, and allow um, for stopping of rounds that would potentially harm or, or kill one of our um, operators overseas or somewhere in uh, the United States. Um, you can also find now AR-500 steel plates. Um, regardless of all the minutiae with inside of plates, it's a way to house that actual apparatus and then put your gear on top of it that we mentioned earlier. Um, the pros and cons to these two different types of, of ideas, a um, chest rig like this is generally going to be a little bit less expensive. Um, it's going to be a little bit cooler to wear because you don't have as much fabric around you. And generally it's going to be much lighter. Sappy plates can weigh anywhere from 
uh, two pounds all the way up to six or eight pounds, depending on the size and the grade of what satin plates or steel you actually purchase for yourself. Um, the, the pros to a plate carrier is obviously you're going to have additional protection from fragmentation or penetration from primary rounds. Uh, additionally to that, you're going to have more real estate, if you are square inches or square footage, to put more gear on. Um, so generally what we see, to kind of break it down a little bit easier, is chest rigs like this are going to be used for day-to-day -day operations, for training, uh, for civilian shooters looking to kind of get into this type of environment. Um, but we don't really generally see these too often uh, in the operating environments. The only caveat to that is what we could do is what's called stacking kits or stacking systems. You may see a gentleman such as this wearing a, um, some type of body protection system, whether it's just a slick type of fabric that's got a chest plate carrier and a rear plate carrier in it with an actual carrier on top of that. That's stacking the systems together. You can do that and it makes it a little bit more universal without having to buy several different types of, of items down the road. Really good design actually. All of our instructors either teach with this or have taught with it before. Um, just a great carrier and I'll list some of the names of these carriers down the road, but this is made by High Speed Gear. Um, great stuff. If we go down from there, we're going to look at another High Speed Gear product. This is what's known as a battle belt. A battle belt can be used for two reasons. Uh, the battle belt in this case is used as a foundation to um, hold and store more gear on it as well. We'll see that he has primary and secondary magazines. He has what's known as a dump pouch. A dump pouch is used to, to basically take empty or near empty magazines and stow them on body. Um, so if we're uh, doing a, a tactical reload with our carbine or pistol uh, and we switch out an old magazine for a new one, we'll take that old magazine and put it in the dump pouch. Great for maintaining magazine accountability, especially if you're in the military, law enforcement. These guys aren't cheap and they're hard to resupply, so you need them as often as possible. Great place to put them. Additional things you can put in there is no taking gear, water, some chow, whatever the case may be. I'm sure if we were to look on his other side, he'd have some type of first aid kit. First aid kits on a body are called IFAX, stands for Individual First Aid Kit. Uh, they come from multitudes of different manufacturers and different price points, um, but it's a great place to put it. One of the advantages of using a battle belt or something around the, the waist is this is, uh, for a human being, one of the easiest places to access. Whether you're in the prone position, the kneeling position, the standing, or some type of unorthodox stature, uh, you should be able to get to your waist easier than if you're on your chest uh, up against a wall or perhaps on the ground. An additional thing uh, we can think of is now that we kind of discussed both the plate and chest rig as well as a battle belt or waist carrying device, is the, des the design or ideas behind why we use these two things either together or separately. If we look at the way this gentleman is currently set up, what I, would, what I would submit to you is this up here is known as an assault platform. Some people will call it a first line platform, but at the end of the day what we're trying to uh, convey to somebody is that this right here is what you're going to wear on your body to actually um, use in the now. This is going to be your immediate reload, so your magazines, your pistol magazines, a knife, a flashlight, the things that are critical to the events, whether it's an offensive, defensive, or civilian operation uh, in the likes of competition. Um, this is going to be the stuff that I essentially have to have or else I cannot run my gun or run the scene. What we'll see on the belt is the belt is generally going to house secondary items. This is known as the sustainment platform or a second line set of gear. This will generally house additional magazines in case you run out up here, your IFAC, your first aid device, maybe a radio, maybe additional types of equipment pieces that are specific to you. Uh, if you're a three gunner and you use a, a suppressor or a can, you may have a can and a pouch there. Uh, whatever the case is, this is going to be gear that you wear around yourself that is not absolutely critical to the event, but is important down the road. Um, we'll see the pistols located on here. I would argue that that's very important to your day-to-day -day operations, but understand it's used as a, as a um, foundation to mount the actual holster too. Um, if you look at the holster, I do want to take note in a training opportunity here, is you see this gentleman is wearing his holster as high up in his crotch as he can and against his hip bone as much as possible. This is the correct placement for a holster. The entire descent of a thigh rig, whether it's for holstering a pistol or potentially more magazines, is to just get it away from the body and off of your waist. 
It is not to put it down at the mid thigh or down by the knee. That is absolutely incorrect and it should be identified and corrected whenever you see that. Um, so this is a good setup right here. The final thing we'll talk about is a sustainment load system, I, AKA a backpack. Uh, the backpack can hold anything you want. It can hold a, a water, water system. It can hold additional chow. It can hold a raincoat. Uh, it might hold maps and radios. It may hold ropes and carabiners, whatever the case is. If you're a competition shooter, it may hold your whole day's um, equipment you need from the time you step away from your vehicle until you get back uh, after the ranges went cold. So this is a great system. Um, this is only one of many that you could choose from. And I'm going to be taking you on a journey in a few minutes here talking about just a few other different pieces of equipment you can use and some specifics on them. I hope you've enjoyed this so far and we'll learn some more in just a few minutes. So let me get reset and uh, we'll get started on our next slide. Alright guys, so I'm sorry I had to turn the light down, but fortunately I'm, I'm a pretty ugly mutt. So uh, instead of looking at me, we'll discuss the stuff you're actually watching this video store, which is this badass gear we have in front of us. Now the first thing I want to do is talk about some individual different setups you can choose and why they might work for you specifically as opposed to just buying something willy-nilly without really knowing the reason for it other than seeing it on the web somewhere. The first thing we're going to talk about is what's known as a thigh rig. Uh, this one right here is a high-speed gear, uh, Costa thigh rig. I think it's very similar to a V1 from HSGI, but uh, alas, it's, it's a very simple system to use and it's very basic and relatively inexpensive. I, can think, I think you can find this for under $100 or so, um, or right around that, that, that point. Um, so a thigh rig is generally worn on your left or right side, uh, depending on if you're going to carry a thigh rig pistol and a thigh rig um, ammunition source, they would be obviously on the opposite side. Um, I would submit you generally never want to wear a pistol and an ammunition source on the same side. That used to be a technique used back even just a few years ago, um, but because of the modern techniques we're teaching as instructors, that's kind of going away. So keep the pistol and the ammunition on two separate sides. This one right here is a really good demonstration of a very versatile kit that you can purchase and really be set up for success. Um, this one here has three uh, what are called pistol taco pouches um, and, th and two um, carbine or rifle taco pouches. Um, they're very cool design. Um, these type of tacos made by HSGI are really fantastic. The reason I want to say this is so versatile is not just because it looks like it holds carbine and Glock magazines. Uh, what I want you to think is this can hold damn near anything. Uh, the carbine uh, tacos can hold anything from an AR-15 to an AK-47 to an FN to a 308 magazine. They can hold Garmin's, they can hold huge mag flashlights, they can hold uh, an IFAX system, they can hold uh, a tourniquet. Anything you can think of you can put inside there and they're going to be retained. The same thing goes for the pistol pouches. You can put a, a Garmin in there, you can put a, a multi-tool, um, a knife, uh, whatever you possibly wanted. A surefire hand light would work great in there. So once you have that in your mind, let's talk about what we can do with this. This would be a great system if you're a hunter or if you need a really light load to go out and do some things from your day-to-day -day operations, whether it's law enforcement or military. It's also an extremely good supplement to additional gear if you're going to be on a sustained patrol or potentially in a sustained deployment for a SWAT team or on a patrol section. Um, this is very comfortable to wear. If you were to look at the back side, it's going to have a mesh and rubber type uh, material. It goes up to a harness and then that harness can clip to either the battle belt we saw on the previous slide or to a, just a standard nylon or, or rugged rescue belt. Uh, with that being said, you can wear this at home. You don't need to buy all this additional gear. And speaking right now, we have at least 56, 58 rounds on us for carbine and probably uh, 30 to 50 pistol magazine, depending on uh, what size magazines we may have. So it's a great load to have, very inexpensive, and it can be a great supplement to something in the future. Once again, this is a HSGI V1 or Costa rig. Uh, sells between uh, probably 150 and 90 bucks, depending on the style and variant you get. So we just looked at something that goes on one of your left or right thighs in addition to an additional system or perhaps by itself. It's a very small compact kit, but now we're going to get a little bit bigger and a little bit more powerful, if you will, with more versatility. This right here is a high-speed gear battle belt. Um, this one's set up so it's able to uh, accept uh, what's called malice or uh, other people still call it molly clip or webbing design. Um, so it's a very versatile system. 
The cool thing is that this specific system, you don't need to buy all HSGI, although I highly suggest it based off of their quality and control. Um, you could buy stuff that you previously um, have used in the past. Maybe you have additional stuff from uh, when you used to be in the military. Whatever the case is, this will work with any Malice or Molly design. So when we talk about a high-speed gear um, battle belt, what's the reason for it? Well, we have a couple. The first and foremost is versatility, and I really suggest this for civilians to pay attention to. Uh, we can put so much stuff on here that it's really going to take care of both if we had something on our chest and our thigh. We can put in excess of five pistol or rifle taco pouches on here or double tacos, which would put our round counts up at exceeding 150, 160 rounds for both pistol and carbine. That's a lot of ammunition. So we know that with something like this, we don't have to worry about that if it's a basic type of routine thing. For competition shooters, um, I think between stages, I find it hard pressed to have to use more than 160 rounds on one single stage. From there, you have so much more gear that you can additionally add on. For example, here we have a G-Co holster put into a Glock on uh, the right side. It appears to be a right-sided shooter with a uh, surefire light up front. Um, back here, he has uh, what appears to be some type of sustainment pouch. I, I really don't know, to be honest with you, what it is, um, but it looks pretty cool. Uh, maybe it's for a first aid kit, and this is where your, uh, your uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, your uh, tourniquet goes. But um, alas, you have more ability for pouches. And then, of course, we have the, uh, the ever-famous high-speed gear dump pouch back here. Most of the time, uh, there's two places to wear a dump pouch, as we mentioned before. They're, they're used for a multitude of reasons. One is going to be at the rear of your body around the 6 o'clock position or 5 o'clock position. And the second most popular place to put it is right up here in the front around the 1 or 2 o'clock, or I'm sorry, the 11 or, the 11 or 12 o'clock position. Depending on your style and how you employ your techniques, uh, it will work well. You look at this battle belt and let's talk about some of the quality features for it. First and foremost, this one is uh, used making or made with a Cobra belt. Uh, attachment system. Cobras are extremely durable, extremely strong, and frankly, uh, they look badass. On top of that, we have a nylon web system that goes through the entire belt system, makes it extremely rug rugged and, and robust. Um, in my several years of using these, I've never had it break on me. Um, it feels like it's a solid piece of a, a equipment or a kit around my waist, and I know it's always going to be trusting. From there, we got a really nice type of rubber padding system. It's really comfortable to wear. Um, I've taught for days exceeding 12 or 14 hours without taking my battle belt off in 90 or 100 degree weather so it's, it's real nice and cool when you're using it for longer times. And then on top of that they use really high strength um, type of nylon webbing and cordage and thread between each web. Um, I've hung some severely heavy stuff off of it and put some really big weight on it from time to time especially if I have a carabiner clipped in and we're doing uh, partner li lifts and lowers or drags and carries. Um, I've never had that thing come undone and I'm a 200 pound guy in addition to whatever the ground's dragging on top of me. So just a great setup. The reason I really suggest this is potentially a first buy for a civilian looking into getting into uh, the tactical market or three gun or competition world. Um, it's really a, a universal um, design that you can use for anything. One of the things that we uh, really try to advocate for these is a home defense solution. If you look at this, uh, this setup here, I would pose the question, what doesn't this have, at least as far as tactical nylon, that you would need for home defense? You got a pistol and a holster. You have an additional source of ammunition. You have a flashlight, a first aid kit, a dump pouch. Right there is essentially everything you need with the exception of a cell phone and a plan to make a home defense package work. You can put this under your bed, inside a nightstand, uh, if the apocalypse happens, I hate to use that term because I don't believe in all that minutia, but um, if you're one of those, those fanfare people, uh, you can throw this on, go get in your vehicle, and you'd be off to the racetracks ready to take care of whatever violence or situation is about to incur. It's a very good solution at a very cheap price. For everything we see here, you're probably in the $300 to $400 range, and that's with extremely high gear, not counting the, the pistol, of course. Um, maybe even a little bit cheaper than that, depending on where you purchase it from. Great, great setup, um, just a fantastic piece of gear. From here, we're gonna move up onto the chest in the back and we'll talk about some different ideas then. All right, what we have here is probably one of my favorite pieces of kit designed by HSGI. This is known as a, an AO. Uh, the AO is a chest rig, so understand it's not gonna have anything in there for plate protection or um, any type of, of ballistic protection. I really like the AO for a multitude of reasons. Just like we mentioned with the uh, 
the belt, the, this system is just as universal. If you imagine with me these three tacos here plus this pouch here will come off and what you get when you actually purchase this, uh, which is a relatively inexpensive item, is going to be about uh, 90 bucks, I believe. It's going to be just a plate carrier with some nylon webbing. Um, the nice thing is we can use this for any reason, not just for in the firearms industry. If you're a photographer, if you work for FEMA, you're on a search and rescue team, uh, maybe you're some type of, of humanitarian that goes out and does, uh, does aid for people. Whatever the reason, you can put radio pouches on here, map pouches, photography pouches, anything you could really think of can be put onto this and right up here in your chest, which is generally going to be considered the most accessible place on your body. Um, this system is really nice because when I teach classes, it's extremely hot. Uh, we're moving all the time, so I, I like to stay cool and for the most part mobile. Um, so I put four uh, carving tacos with pistol tacos on there or, or a double taco, and I have enough uh, ammunition for three or four hours of uh, instruction from that point on. The other thing you can do, which most of our instructors do uh, take advantage of, is wear a, a multi-system. Multi so we'll wear the AO chest rig with a battle belt and that will give us all of our ammunition, first aid, radio communications, uh, training devices, um, shot clocks, you name it, uh, for the entire day. So uh, with two items, we can really take care of the entire thing. Um, this is great for um, military law enforcement as well. If you're going to be wearing a slick system, which means you're not going to be wearing a chest rig, uh, or I'm sorry, a, uh, a personal protection equipment device like a, uh, a sappy plate or an AR-500 steel deflection device, um, it's also good if you're going to be doing UC or undercover and you have a second chance vest on or really like Kevlar, um, you can go ahead and wear this under a, a stack um, down jacket or maybe even unzipped. Um, it's so slimline you can really wear it all of the time and it's going to be pretty concealed for the most part. Uh, great system. Um, it has two straps like over your back um, and then it turns into a bikini so your back has one cross strap and you can make gross and fine adjustments from there. Uh, it works really well in any environment. Uh, and a really good piece of equipment, like I said. Don't have a whole lot of drawbacks about it. Um, I will say that one big potential hazard with this that I found out is you really need to manage your additional cordage that you tighten from your straps. Um, behind his elbows here, you're going to have two clips that you clip in to keep the harness on, and they have little pigtails, as we call them, of fabric that come off. Well, that fabric naturally lies right in line with your, your uh, holster and unholster draw technique. So what we've seen from some of our students who haven't managed that pigtail is that strap will go into their um, holster, they go to reseat the holster, and it's real, real close to uh, having a negligent discharge. So make sure you manage that. And another thing while we're on this topic is anytime you purchase a new set of equipment, keep the receipt. And uh, while you're in a test phase, um, go ahead and test it out wearing the clothes you're going to wear in the summer, the fall, winter, and spring. Because those change from time to time, that may change how the actual gear wears on your body. So go ahead and try that all out in the AC or in the garage while you have time um, and make sure it fits before you, you buy it and forget about the receipt and, or use it and can't return it. Um, that's really important to say. And one final note I'll say on how you fit gear is if you're going to cut off these extra straps which are located, um, like actually let me pull up a photo here so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so as you can see in this, this image here, we have these additional straps here. If you're going to uh, cut those off to manage it so it doesn't basically do the hazard I just identified or other reasons, um, the best idea to do here is whatever the thickest amount or the heaviest garment or clothing you're going to wear, whether it's in the winter or some other time, go ahead and throw that on and then adjust your straps to about three to four inches of slack on top of that and then cut the straps at that point. So, uh, what we don't want to see is uh, it's summertime, so you're just wearing a, a sheer t-shirt. You put this on, zip it down as tight as it can be, cut the straps off, and now when it's winter and 20 below, and you're trying to wear a, a 400 weight, 1,000 weight um, uh, down jacket, you can't fit it over your body. So make sure you do that, and you should have success. So the next item we have is a wasatch. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the piece of kit that I wore in Afghanistan and several other countries on combat. Uh, deployment. Um, really awesome piece of kit. This is a true plate carrier, so this will um, accept a sappy plate both front and rear, uh, full size all the way down to small if you're a female or a small statured male. Um, it will also fit different types of uh, third-party ones that we now are seeing. 
Um, the Wasatch is really cool. It, it retails for anywhere from about $250 to $200. I think on the website it's about $230. So really cool set, set of gear. Um, what you'll see here is uh, you got your chest rig, which sports your sappy plate, one in the front and one in the back. In the rear, you also have a separate pouch for a hydration kit. It'll hold at least 100 ounces of water, if not more. Um, if you're in the military, excellent set to look at. Um, in the rear, you can put big maps. If you got um, pocket maps or anything like that, those can go up front. But if you've got big grid maps or multiple ones, you can put those back there. Air panels for medevac, casavacs is a great place to, to put that. You can put additional um, trauma dressings and things if you're a medic or something like that. Just a, a plethora of things you can do. Up front, um, this pull tab right here opens up into uh, what I refer to as a water resistant pouch. Um, I don't know if it was really designed that way, but the type of nylon that's in there. Um, I used to put all my soft papers inside of a plastic Ziploc bag. Um, and my little things that I needed right now, um, my 9-line Kazovac, my 7-line uh, air, air uh, <coughs> call for airport, all of those different things can be in there. Um, so in the event you need it now in a gunfight, you can pull it out real quickly and you don't have to reach in your back. Um, pens and, and knives can fit up there, really cool stuff. Really strong um, shoulder straps. Um, you can also buy for like 30, 40 bucks. I don't know how much they are exactly. Um, some shoulder strap po po pouches, if you will, um, or I guess padding, and it's that really cool rubber padding uh, that goes over your shoulders, so um, that weight can kind of be distributed over your, your shoulder bones a little bit better, and it's a little bit more comfortable. Up front, you have your assortment of magazine pouches. Your magazine pouches aren't just limited to magazines. I had a Surefire C3 up there. I also had two pop-ups. I had some grenades. Um, so you can use it for whatever the case may be. Uh, for police, it's really no different. For civilians, um, I don't really know what you put up there aside from maybe magazines and a, uh, a flashlight, but keep in mind there's potential reasons or things you can use that for. Some other things you'll notice about the Wasatch, Wesatch, and Wusatch, which are all three different sizes and slight variants of each other, is uh, you can also get side staff holders. So if your um, agency or your department or your unit calls for you actually having to use side sappies, you can go ahead and employ those. You can get a cummerbund system for this, uh, which is a little bit more comfortable, or you can just clip it in. So there's lots of cool stuff you can do for it and kind of make it modular to specifically yourself. As far as civilian use, I don't know if we really need this. This is a little bit overkill. Um, you know, if you're one of those doomsday preppers and this is to your calling, then, then great, and go ahead and, and purchase it. For somebody who's looking just to take a one or two day class and potentially maybe a few more classes down there, the road, um, on their endeavor to become a better shooter, a tactical shooter. I don't know if this is for you. These are extremely warm and hot. They maintain a lot of sweat and body heat. Um, they're uncomfortable to wear, um, especially if you're not tempered to them. I know for me, um, I purchased one uh, before going on one of my eight month deployments and it, uh, right before I left, I, I started wearing it with my full loadout and it probably wasn't until about third or four, fourth month into my actual deployment that my my traps and my, my back straps didn't hurt as bad as how they, they did at the beginning. So this is something you definitely can't just wear and think you're going to be um, on point with it right from the beginning. Alas, it's a great piece of kit. I've worn it. I'll, I'll swear by it with my life because it's protected it a few times. Um, so great piece by HSGI as well. So what we have here, this is going to be my last slide. Um, this is our family of HSGI tacos. Uh, I used to use others like a uh, I, I mainly used um, Eagle Industries for the longest time, um, but since the, that point, they're really hard to get if you're not military or law enforcement. Um, but this is our family of, of tacos, as they're called. Uh, we see here we got a double decker taco, which is probably the most popular. It's going to be a carbine as well as a pistol um, magazine pouch, which is in unison. They're stacked on top of each other. A soft taco, an XRRP an XR2, and I don't know if you can see it down here, but these are slick models just of themselves. Um, tons of different configurations and tons of different versatile uses. These shouldn't just be called, um, in your mind, a magazine pouch. Uh, HSGI did a great marketing tool here, not calling it a magazine pouch. It's called um, a double decker because it just can be used for anything. You can see up in here, this one has a, a knife, and I don't know what else is behind it. You can put a Nalgene bottle in it. Um, you can put a suppressor or a baton. Um, you can put, uh, in this one, this has a, an IFAC and individual first aid kit. Two magazines, a big magazine, they'll fit 45s, 10 millimeter, 9 millimeter, 22. Um, anything you can think of, they'll probably fit in there. 
They have a really good retention system which makes it adjustable. It's a pull string and drawstring system. So once you fit it in there, they'll work good, good and dandy. Uh, one thing I've noticed being in the resale and, and kind of retailer uh, market as well, people will buy these and they're intimidated by how tight they are when they first get them. If you put your magazines in there and, and pull them nice and tight, give it about one or two or three days of uh, break in time and they should be nice and easy to use from that point on. Um, I will also admit that um, Decker, the, the double deckers and all these tacos and really all of the malice designed equipment is an absolute burden to put onto your kit. Um, this is not easy to take and put onto my chest rig with the, the uh, kind of the connecting installation devices. Um, it, it'll, it'll take uh, bloody fingers and some um, screwdrivers and some knives and some um, needle nose pliers to get this done. But I will say this, once they are on the system, they're probably the most robust bomb proof connection device I've ever seen in the industry. So I hate to say it, but once you get this put on, it's going to take a lot of time to get them off. Just do them right the first time. You can go to HSGI's website or anywhere on YouTube and kind of, you know, uh, put that in there. And how do I install these? And you'll find a video on them. So with that being said, that's some of the equipment that, um, that we use as instructors at T3, um, as well as our students, we, uh, we suggest they purchase in military law enforcement. Obviously, like I said earlier, there's tons of different uh, equations and ways you can configure all of this gear to yourself. Think outside the box when you do it. Um, also, always look at the price points and what you have for your lifestyle and in your needs. Keep in mind that <coughs> oftentimes you get what you pay for. If it's not a stand-up company made in America or Britain, um, really it's difficult to say the quality of it the, at, at this point in time with the, the technology and equipment that we're seeing in the industry. Um, usually you get what you pay for and, and high speed gear is no different. You pay a little bit more, but you really get the best stuff. Um, the final thing I'll say is try it on and make sure it fits before you actually either purchase it or you actually put it under hard use. Make sure it fits with all of your equipment and make sure it works for you. Finally, understand that tactical gear is an evolutionary process for you as a shooter or as a technician or any type of operator. Your gear is going to change as your techniques change and as you mature as a shooter or operator. So the stuff you're seeing right now, you may purchase and work well for six months, and as soon as you develop a new technique that you employ, the system will have to be changed, manipulated, or completely changed out for another one. Um, most of us will tell you we have huge Tupperwares and containers at home uh, full of this stuff that we've, we've gathered over you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years of, of doing this for a living, um, and that should be no different for you. Just understand, uh, have the head and the intuition to understand if it's not working, get it changed out for something else. Once again, my name is Mark Williams, Chief Instructor and, and Student Coordinator here at Trigger Time Gun Club uh, for the, the training department, Trigger Time Training. You can find us at www.t3main.com. Hope you guys had a great day and I'll speak to you soon.